Greeting shippers, welcome back. And even though it's not Shippoween anymore, we still need to take a look at a modern horror pairing. We're gonna be taking a look at the pairing of digital urban legend, The Slender Man, and you. That's right, you. There are people out there creating works with sexy Slender Man and more and we need to talk about it. So we're gonna dip our toes into the creepy pasta shipping fandom, for yes, it exists. Indeed, in our first proper horror ship video about the Penny Duck pairing, I made a joke about how it could seem odd to potentially find a horror pairing within horror movies in the horror genre. And many, missing my sardonic tone, directed me to the creepy pasta fandom. I took that to mean that people wanted to hear about it. So, here we are. Also, if you missed that video, you can click the card or the link will be down below. Before we get started, as always, please do follow on social media to stay up to date. Just come over to chit chat about fandom and know when we're streaming. It's all a good time, I swear. Now, we have a lot to get to. X-Reader fix, monster f and of course, the Slender Man himself. So, let's get started. While rendered famous for creepy pastas, there are a lot of factors that led to the proliferation of the Slenderman myth and popularity, which while traced back to creepy pasta, did not truly originate there. Slenderman was created by Victor Serge, real name Eric Knudsen, on June 10th of 2009 for a Photoshop contest on the Something Awful forum. The contest being to Photoshop a paranormal image, Something Awful being a comedy website created in 1999 that has become known for perpetuating ideas across internet culture, and was ranked 89th on Gizmodo's 2018 list, 100 websites that shaped the internet as we know it today. And Slender Man has certainly changed the internet and the culture beyond it. For the contest, Nudson created two now famous images. The first captioned, we didn't want to go, we didn't want to kill them, but its persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. 1983, photographer unknown, presumed dead. The second captioned, one of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze, notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished, and for what is referred to as the Slender Man. Deformities cited as film defects by officials. Fire at library occurred one week later. Actual photograph confiscated as evidence. 1986. Photographer Mary Thomas. Missing since June 13th, 1986. These captions are credited by observers of internet history as being what allowed the Slender Man to escape the confines of the Photoshop contest and spread beyond as they introduced the element of lore to the creature and also set a format where in subsequent editions would also have captions or stories associated. And indeed the story spread quickly. On June 20th, 2009, the first video of the series Marble Hornets was posted on YouTube by Troy Wagner, another member of Something Awful, who was joined in his creation by Joseph Delage. Marble Hornets was in essence a found footage style series inspired by the Slenderman mythos. Quick side note, Marble Hornets also has its own small but active shipping fandom. As for the mythos, that was rapidly what Slenderman had become, as the concept leapt from images to text stories, quickly becoming a creepypasta, which initially was more of a concept than a place, as the term itself is a portmanteau, creepy, and copypasta, the latter being slang for when one copies and pastes a large block of text. And for a time, they were not housed on a massive archive. Some early examples in 2001 are located on individually hosted Angel Fire sites, and later many were posted on image board website 4chan. With shifts in how the internet was perceived and the move towards community-based projects and massive archives, creepypastas came to be mostly housed on creepypasta.com, created in 2008, though there have been and are other archives. However, most are not as well known. Through the spread of memetic, now known as meme culture, for not all memes need be funny, the Slender Man was off. His popularity and reach further expanded, touching the mainstream with two significant events. The New York Times reporting on the Creepypasta website in 2010, upon which the Slender Man was already a legendary story and character, and the 2012 game Slender The Eight Pages, a game with well over 2 million downloads. In the annals of internet history, the Slender Man has gone beyond internet legend, into the realm of urban legend, as some seem to actually believe he exists, or at least suspend their disbelief to fully embrace the lore. So what exactly is it about the Slender Man that has allowed him to take such a firm hold of fandom, shipping, and otherwise? Well, for one thing, the Slender Man is inspired by many firmly or at least popular slash recognizable horror concepts. The Mothman, the Tall Man, the works of William S. Burroughs, games such as Silent Hill, and Resident 
and evil. All these influences being built upon by those who identified with or enjoyed them and added to creating a more complete character. As the Slender Man is a story made of many parts, told by many people, and that is part of what makes it work and why it has lasted, though that also has to do with timing and its placement at what some feel was the turning point of online culture into something much larger and more mainstream, as well as a huge booming period of the digital creative economy. At the time Slender Man emerged, it was not as common for works to go viral in such a lasting way, nor was it common for them to in any way become monetizable, but that was rapidly about to change. And hence, Slender Man stood out, and some people were interested because it was so large, because it spread so fast, and because they could contribute to it with stories, fan art, and more. The Slender Man appealed to those who liked to tell scary stories, as well as those who liked to be scared by them. And it also appealed to another group, the monster f***ers. This rather crass term that such participants lovingly call themselves, though not all of it, has also been coined as tetraphilia, defined by Urban Dictionary as people who are sexually and romantically attracted to monsters slash inhuman creatures. This obviously extends beyond Slender Man as a concept, but Slender Shippers would fall under this category of shipper. So why do people ship themselves with the Slender Man? There has long been a crack contingent surrounding Slender Man, from silly stories to sexy Slender to daddy Slender, the second being exactly what it sounds like, sexy renditions of Slender Man, from suit porn to just extremely cut and lovingly rendered Slender Man, there was a subset who dealt in works with an attractive Slender Man, whose appeal was less luridly horror-based and more romantic or sexual. Now these are admittedly largely for fun, a comedic spin on a scary concept, not a romanticization of a child killer, but rather a celebration of the ludicrous. A trend that carries on over into other Slender Man pairings, not just Slender Man X Reader, for indeed the Slender Man is paired with other characters as well, usually also creepypastas, but they can also be alternate versions of himself, for the Slenderman myth has grown and expanded as time has gone on, leading to many offshoots of Slenderman, Slenderman's brothers, such as Sexual Offender Man, Splendor Man, or Trender Man, and oft times the Slenderman will be paired with them as well. Now the Slender X Reader fandom is a larger contingent of this mythos and its surrounding meta works than many would imagine, however, it is still more likely to encounter the crack contingent. But what is occurring both in these works and outside it is fascinating. But before before we explore that, we must quickly define the X-Reader fic. The X-Reader fic is a genre of fanfiction wherein the protagonist of the fic is the reader. These most commonly tend to be romantic or smut fics, but can of course vary. They are the ultimate in reader insert, and are often mocked for that. They are also usually written in second person, which is a writing tense that some have a hard time identifying with, despite it directly referring to the reader. As first person perspective, which many find easier to enter, is still used to represent another character character's perspective. So how much one enjoys this tense will greatly impact how they view the X reader fic. There are also some that employ a your name here format. We will leave a full discussion on the merits and detriments of the X reader fic for another time. As it pertains to Slender Man, the X reader factor can be a draw or a roadblock. As for what types of works one can find, they vary. Some are working through an extreme version of the bad boy trope, a scenario wherein the reader is the only one to know the secret hidden depths of this supposed monster, making their relationship special and something only they understand, playing through an us against the world dynamic that many shippers find appealing, particularly those drawn to counter-dependence narratives. There are some using this pairing to work through dark times in their own life. This often culminates in the revenge fic. A slender man is the avenging angel, seeking out those who had wronged and in most of these scenarios bullied the protagonist. These work well for those who feel othered or separate, and may gravitate towards other entities that depending upon how one reads them, could be seen as misunderstood. For some, this is less of a reach, as the lore of the Slender Man is part of the original lore, as evidenced by the first caption, a pull that is both terrifying and comforting, so some are merely extrapolating upon and playing with that element. Others are entertaining a more taboo or fantasy style story. Sexual slender fics can be an outlet for such fantasies that may otherwise be deemed inappropriate, though some would argue that this is already inappropriate, as the slender man lends itself to less vanilla fare, while others still fully embrace the darkness and revel in the taboo nature, kink, consenticles, or in Slenderman's case potentially regular tentacles, 
etc. For some, a dark fantasy, for others, a chance to tell a horror story, as mentioned in our Dark Rex vid. Some enjoy exploring the dark aspects of human nature. Not to say they are condoning them, but they find them fascinating to explore, and there can be an enjoyment or even fun there. There are also complex multi part narratives being written as adventures the reader can partake in. As part of the appeal of Slenderman lies in his status as an urban legend, the idea that he could be real. Hence, he seems like a fragment of the real world, which is why in fandom terms, it is in no way surprising that so many fics are ex-reader. For who else would the other participants be other than the actual people Slenderman would conceivably visit? While this is by no means a hard and fast rule, Slender ex-reader tends to appeal to a younger shipping demographic. Some stick with it, others do not. This can be tracked through the fact that a great many Slender X Reader fix appeared first on DeviantArt, at the height of Slenderman's and also DeviantArt's popularity when it came to posting fix in the early to late 2000s, while the most recent outings tend to be housed on Wattpad, which while founded in 2006, only found its footing as a fanfiction hub in the mid to late 2010s, and tends to attract a younger writer and reader base. This, however, is a trend, not a rule, and the appeal of Slenderman X Reader does not just have to be for the young, though this kind of taboo fic can be an appealing starting point for a young shipper, as they navigate their likes and dislikes when it comes to dark fic, or simply the otter side of fandom, with a figure that is a familiar part of their landscape. It must be noted that the perceived age of these shippers can be used to negate this ship, minimize or mock it. Some go so far as to use pairings like this one to further the stereotype that all fandom is full of ludicrous, sex-crazed teen virgin girls, and as a result, not be taken seriously. Which even when fans fall into that rather mean-spirited stereotype does not mean the works are without merit. Which, regardless of age, is not how a ship should be treated. Of course, having a sense of humor about one's ship is vital, but people must also discuss ships with respect, as they can mean a great deal to certain shippers. It's a fine line to walk between oversensitivity and callousness. The youth element, or perceived element, can also be part of why this pairing is slightly side-eyed, as over time, Slenderman has come to have a contentious relationship with how the public feels about him, particularly his relationship and appeal to young people, mostly as a result of the 2014 incident now known as the Slenderman stabbing, wherein two 12-year-olds lured a classmate into the woods and stabbed them 19 times, leaving them for dead. Miraculously, they survived, crawling through the forest to get help. The girls were arrested and charged, a large part of their defenses being rooted in insanity. Throughout investigations, it was gleaned that the girls who had perpetrated the attack claimed to have a large affinity for Slenderman, even believing him to be real, and that the girl had been a sacrifice. Just like a violent video game or film being linked to a real incident, the source was tainted, and questions began to surround it, and parents began to fear. It also soured the perceptions of people on the outside looking in, regardless of age. And this sentiment still continues, and was on full display with the release of the 2018 movie, which some argued should never have been made, because it capitalized on a tragic event. While others argued that the same could be said for not only many horror movies, but films in general, the sentiment remained, as the incident was still very fresh in the minds of many. In fact, in theaters in the Milwaukee region, the film did not even play as there was a fear of inciting copycat crimes, and that the filmmakers did not understand how seriously people took the Slender Man, particularly young people. However, on the flip side, from the intended fan base, there were some that felt that those with concerns did not understand how the relationship between them and the Slender Man had changed, and how the Slender Man no longer had quite the same punch that he used to. Indeed, amongst many, the sentiment was that the film had been made years too late, as the height of Slender Man mania and popularity had passed, and instead remained was more curiosity than excitement. Admittedly, the Slenderman stabbing did help steer some away from the Slenderman, but not everyone, and it is unclear how much this truly contributed to his decline in popularity. As one knows about internet memes, they do not stay popular or relevant forever. On this topic, mileage very much varies, and there are some who find any media surrounding the Slenderman inherently offensive, and others who feel that it is all par for the course. People who identified with the Slenderman began to be side-eyed, or surreptitiously bookmarked as people to watch. And this was for a standard horror movie-esque appreciation. Imagine the confusion of a parent or a friend discovering a sexual or romantic fic, crackish or otherwise. Stabbings aside, some feel this ship is simply problematic given the Slender Man's lore. Now, the Slender Man does not have a clear mission statement. Not exactly. Likely as a result of having been cobbled together out of so many different people's ideas. Though there are a couple of key elements, namely that he comes for and captures children, taking them with him to his mysterious 
Shadow Realm, also that he can be appeased with sacrifices, and is unclear who he will take versus who he will kill. For most, this is a terrifying concept, especially if one in any way connects it to thoughts of real-world child disappearances. Not in the fact that he causes them by any means, but just thinking about missing children and what often happens to them can be saddening, angering, or triggering for some. So many cannot understand why one would want to be in a fandom creating fluff, smut, or romantic works around what they view as both a literal and figurative monster who would contribute suffering to the world. Again, as with many things in fandom, it comes down to separation. Most indulging in the Slenderman fandom are well aware he is not real, and suspending disbelief is different from abandoning all reason. For many, the separation of fiction and reality allows them to create a host of works they hope people will enjoy, from the funny to the smutty to the dark. Though many fics will still have disclaimers with lines such as, because I'm crazy, or why the hell not? Like any pairing, there can be good works in it and bad works, and it is not for everyone. If one is willing to relax and acknowledge what kind of fandom they are entering and about to partake in, it can be a fun time where most don't take themselves too seriously and employ a twist upon an admittedly monstrous character. It can also house works of greater depth than some may have imagined, and provide surprising comfort as well. There are many ways to interpret something, and they can exist simultaneously. For example, one can acknowledge the Slenderman lore and still enjoy the shipping aspect, and many feel people need their outlets and their escapes. As always, tag correctly, and for readers be mindful of where you are headed in fandom. Are you a slender shipper? What about a monster f do you enjoy X-Reader fix? That seems like enough questions, and you know the drill. Answer as many of them as you can, numbered if possible. I'd love a good essay comment. So yes, this video was indeed supposed to be for Shippoween, and as you can see, it did not make it. The Slender Man demanded a decent amount of research, and I just fell down the hole of various articles about the mythos of the Slender Man and what the Slender Man means to internet culture, and before you knew it, it was days later. It was also easy to just spend a long time looking at people's art, manips, gifts, most of which were better than the 2018 film. I guess we're gonna have to wait another year for this. Oh yes, behold it in all its glory. I got a wig. To wig or not to wig? That is the question. The answer is most certainly to wig. Although what this wig was supposed to be for was for Poison Ivy, but upon looking at it, it is far too red. But perhaps Pippi Longstocking? Pippi Longstocking, ooh or the Wendy's mascot. The Wendy's mascot is me. As always, I appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to come and spend it discussing shipping with me, especially for some what might be an otter, more out there, or a downright questionable ship. It's all highly intriguing, and we'll of course be back soon with more videos. Shipping, tropes, and much, much more. Until then, let's get to that outro. Bye bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side for helping to make these videos possible and for helping us streamline and determine content. There are, as always, more videos coming soon, so until then, stay tuned for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.